All right, there's been a controversial topic in the Hockey Talk section of ClusonChair.com. If you read the thread about Bugard being suspended for five games, a lot of people got into the conversation about a goon's role in the NHL like that of Derek Bugard. I personally have said many, many times I am against those type of players completely. The Derek Bugards, George Peroses, and George Larocs of the league should not be in the NHL. Now, I think a lot of people are getting why I think they shouldn't be. They're a little misconstrued. Now, Bites should be in the NHL. The superstars need their protection, and those big hits and the momentum swings need to be there. But here's the thing. Why do we need these idiots who are like six foot five, can barely stand on skates, and only go out there for two minutes a game to punch someone in the face several times? I just don't get it. Like, the type of player that I think we need in the NHL is the Cal Clutterbucks, the Daniel, Daniel Carcillos, those type of players. They will stick up for their teammates when needed. They will throw a big hit to swing the momentum. They will fight. They will protect. They will do everything that these stupid enforcers will do. But they will chip in 10 to 20 goals a year and actually play more than 10 minutes a game. Now, I don't mean, when I mean these types of players, I don't mean the Sean Averys. I don't want some idiot to go around, cheap shot everyone, you know, stick to the back, cross check to the head, just to piss them off. I don't like that. I want to see energy, I want to see hits, and I want to see fights. Now, there's plenty of guys who can do this without being a friggin' idiot who only plays two minutes a game. Because the Bugard incident itself was the perfect re example as to why these guys are idiots. There's just under two minutes left in the game. Game got heated. Jacques Lemaire got upset. Derek Bugar going on the ice and hurt someone. And I know Brandon Prust can get under the skin of most players, but that elbow was just bad. Like, because the NHL should have took him, took all circumstances into consideration for that one. The time, the elbow, the reputation, because I don't think five games was just. I would have said more towards a 10 to 15. Because had Prust got seriously hurt, this would be a lot bigger of a topic than it actually is. Um, like I said, the goons, I don't like them in the league. I like the, the agitators, the energy guys, the clutter bucks of the league. But that's just me. I want to hear what you guys think. Um, comments below, or we've already got a good conversation going about it, clusonjar.com, the, the Bugard thread. So let's hear your thoughts on that one. All right, as some of you know, I went down to Detroit on Wednesday. I got to see my favorite team in action. I got to see them play the best team in the NHL, the San Jose Sharks. Now, I got to say, for anybody who loves to watch a hockey game and lives within reasonable distance to Detroit, go see a game. I got the tickets for dirt cheap. I guess there are plus sides to the economy being so crap. I saw a great game. Um, Detroit played amazing. Like Their puck control is just outstanding. Um, San Jose really actually underwhelmed me. I, I imagine they just had an off game, but Joe Thornton, to anyone who questions why I didn't put him on my 2010 game, Find a replay of that game and watch it. He just kind of stayed along the boards the whole time and didn't really skate, shoot, make any good passes. He was just kind of there. But yeah, anyways, getting back to the positives. Detroit, I, I was ecstatic after the game. I'm thinking, oh my god, we have the Stanley Cup wrapped up. And, uh, yeah. Alright, alright, we beat San Jose 4-1. We might actually be alright this year. Only one goal let in against the best team in the league. I think we'll do all right in the playoffs. And in other news, the Nashville Predators beat the Detroit Red Wings 8 to nothing. Hello, Chicago? Hey, you guys still got Nikolai Abbey going up for grabs? Okay, so I think it's safe to say we might need a goaltender. But again, this whole same situation went through last year with Hasek and Osgood. I wasn't sold on them. I said the best thing that could happen to Detroit is if Hasek gets shelled early in the playoffs because he was terrible, and then they'd ride Osgood, which happened, and they won. I'm not sold on either goalie this year, so hopefully for Detroit's sake they go out and get a good goalie at the trade deadline. Um, I know Chicago's got the kind of carousel and net over there. Maybe Thomas Fokun, Craig Anderson from Florida. Just throwing it out there. I know there's a few goalies up for grabs. Hopefully Detroit can get one of them. All right, heroes and zeros of the week. Um, my first hero, Martin Brodeur of the New Jersey Devils. 
Now, as many of you know, he was off injured for an extended period of time, and everyone was worried. When he comes back, uh, Clemenson's been hot. Do they keep playing Clemenson, or do they put Marty back in net? Well, obviously, you put Marty Broder back in net. Come on. Who cares that Clemenson's been hot? Broder's the greatest goalie of all time, arguably. And what does he do? Gets two shutouts. So... That speaks for itself. It's hard enough for a goalie to play cold after missing a week, let alone a few months, and then to come back and get two shutouts. That's speaking of something. He got his 100th career shutout. Could break Sawcheck's record by the end of the year, and I hope to see that happen because it's always fun watching records in the making. Hero number two, Jerome McGinley of the Calgary Flames. Now, as many of you know, a few weeks ago, he went through a terrible slump. I think he went like seven-plus games without a goal. But now he's starting to get hot again, playing, scoring contributing and just today this evening actually set the Calgary Flames all-time record for points and scored his 400th goal so just want to say congratulations Jerome McGinley that is why you are my second hero all right now for my zeros this week um two pretty obvious ones in my book and two guys I think should both get the boot uh for longer than they got first zero Derek Bugard of the Minnesota Wild simply for that hit on Brandon Prest that was dirty. It was late in the game. You're a useless hockey player. Your team is not going to miss you if you get suspended for five games. So why not go out there and just belt someone in the head and possibly end their career? Uh, Derek, if by some miracle you're watching this, just do the NHL a favor, quit, and go work in some steel factory somewhere because you are a useless as a hockey player. And my second zero, Brendan Witt of the New York Islanders. Now, normally this guy's a really good hockey player and viable defensively. He does play on the edge, but usually he contains himself. Well, apparently the Islanders are having a terrible year, and it's starting to get to him because that elbow to the head of Nicholas Hagman, that was bad. That was very bad. Um, at least with the Bugard hit on Prust, Prust was coming this way, Bugard was going this way, and they kind of ran into each other. Bugard should have put a shoulder into him instead, tried to put his head through the glass with his elbow. But Hagman went to go around Witt. The play had already been passed. Hagman got rid of the puck. And Witt reaches with his elbow and just clips him in the face. Now, those ones actually generally hurt a lot more than the ones you're expecting. Because, you know, you get out of the way. It seems like a harmless play. And next thing you know, you're basically out cold on the ice. So, for that useless play, Brendan Witt, you suck. Zero number two. And just one last thing, um, as everyone, as I mentioned in the previous video, Craft Hockeyville 2009. Voting is beginning right now, so go to cbc.ca and vote for Woolwich Township. See you guys next time.